The chapel for a military hospital in Antwerp, Belgium once resonated with the sounds of Sunday prayer. Today, it reverberates with the conversation of an Epicurean congregation. It's now a design and gourmet temple called the Jane. Owner of the two-star restaurant is Chef Nick Brill. Five times a week, he holds a fine dining church service. The menu isn't the only part that's divine. Architects, designers, and artists collaborated to create a singular atmosphere. Nick Brill had a very particular vision of a gourmet restaurant. <laughs> I like a place to be energetic. I love it when you can have fine dining, which is not boring. I love it when you can enjoy your table moment, you know, have a good chat with your table partner, with your wife, maybe a group of friends, doesn't matter. And I think that the atmosphere of a restaurant needs to support, kind of even encourage that kind of a, a good vibe at the table. The Jane is a perfect blend of ancient and ultra-modern. Suspended beneath the weathered 20-meter-high vaulted roof is an array of lights. The chandelier weighs some 800 kilos with over 140 glass bulbs and hangs about three meters above the floor. Instead of biblical scenes, the windows are adorned with stylized gastronomic motifs. The furniture, too, is custom-made. And in place of the altar stands a glass culinary kitchen. We don't have so much strong etiquette. It's quite loose. It's quality, but it's very access accessible. And I think that makes also our restaurant not typical, a fine dining Michelin star restaurant, but more really a cool location to go to. Of course, with a budget, but I think what I see that also younger generations are willing to spend more on quality. To Nick Brill, quality also means an environmentally conscious use of resources. Even in winter, the restaurant's own roof garden supplies herbs and vegetables, blossoms, and eggs. Carp are kept here too, not for cooking, but as providers of fertilizer. The carp turn kitchen scraps into nutrients which come back to the plants through the water. Nick Brill sees it as a place to get new, creative ideas. So I'm trying out a new dish now with, with pigeon. Pigeon is quite sweet, so I want to contrast the flavor with fermented beets and then these really strong, kind of spicy, peppery watercresses. He'd found the inspiration for this dish at a Luxembourg restaurant a few days before. He enjoyed the broad palette of flavor and could hardly wait to recreate it, though not one-to-one. -one. I'm really interested now to how to have my own signature, but then tweaked a little bit with having different approaches of freshness and acidity in the dishes. So I'm, I'm testing out a little bit with this. So it's fermented 20 days, and now I just slice it really raw. And because the acid's in there, I'm just going to serve it pure. So I just folded it in beetroot. I'm going to make a little bouquet together with all the greens from the rooftop to have a little salad bouquet together with the pigeons. So it's going to be a main course, meaty, smoky, and then the vegetables and, and edible things from the rooftop will freshen it up and give a lot of um, yeah, herb notes to it. His first signature dish was made of lobster and caviar. Now he thinks it's boring. Nick Brill and his 20-person kitchen crew are quite open to international influences, always bringing back new ideas from their various travels. The chef is especially fascinated by Japanese cuisine. Everything that I tested new is working out well. So now I need to figure out what elements do I implement. And I'm going to approach a little bit more Japanese flavors inside. So I'm going to have a bit of ginger going on or a little bit of picket mayoga flour, some more freshness, uh, a bit of more, you know, wow factor. When Nick Brill isn't commanding the kitchen and pampering the patrons of his two-star restaurant, he devotes some time to his other interest, music. Now he's also a sought-after DJ. He regularly spins discs for clubs and festivals. Mixing diverse elements, whether on the plate or the turntable, seems to be his forte. The fact that we have a food bar, the fact that we have a DJ playing in the weekend, um, and the fact that we have CDs, vinyls, uh, SoundCloud page. A lot of other restaurateurs are contacting me, colleagues like, oh, Nick, man, really, you know, you need to help us out with, with the music for the restaurant. Can you help us out? Can you advise? Can you provide? So people know that we are strong also on that level. 
An uplifting experience for ear and palate made all the more enjoyable by its unusual setting. The Jain is a place of pilgrimage for disciples of taste.